Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to this month's Connect with Control M. Today, we'll be discussing the new features provided in latest version of Control M for SAP. My name is Javier Nunez, and I'm a lead technical support analyst at BMC Software. I'm based in Madrid and support the Control M products for distributed systems in Europe. Over the next 20 minutes, we will discuss what's new and how you can get the most out from the product. Before I move on to the agenda, I would like to introduce today's panelist, Eric Rudy and Froilan Reyes. If you have any questions at any time during the, this presentation, please feel free to enter them in the Q&A panel, and we will cover them at the end of the session. Finally, if you wish to shave today's presentation, you can do it by going to File and Shave and save it as PDF. We'll start with an overview of the architecture, discuss the new features and enhancements, and then move on to the demo. We'll then discuss some useful, useful information and finish off with a Q&A section. The basics of the product have not changed, and just like the other control modules, this product is installed on top of any supported Control M agent version. Control M for SAP uses the Java library provided by SAP and interacts with the SAP system using one of the following two, met two methods. The first one uses the standard APIs provided by SAP in the XBP interface. And the second use the control M function models included with our product, which are required to be loaded in the SAP system server. In version 9, we have improved the communication layer of the product, which provides more robustness and stability to your environment. Let's move to the new features. Starting in version 9, we have three new, new job types. Watch for an SAP event, trigger an SAP event, and activate, deactivate an SAP profile. We'll now talk about this in more depth. In version 9, we can watch for an SAP event from a job. This allows us to see the link between the event triggering SAP and the SAP job. Additionally, it provides further functionalities like the ability to stop at a 13-day hour, just like the file watcher, and an alert can be sent if the event is not found and the job completes. Last but not least, it does not require the component called extractor to watch the events. In the previous version, the trigger and SAP event was available via the CTM R3 Rec utility which some found a little tricky, so we have simplified the process by making it much easier to see the links between triggering watching an event from a control end job. Now we have the option to enable and disable SAP profiles. With this new job type, you can schedule and set the active SAP profile without manually activating the profile from CCM or SAP system. This new job type allows you to choose the profile type of perception or event history. A good example of the interception profile type would be the running of a job to activate a specific SAP profile. We would allow the job's interception while blocking the SAP online users running that job directly in the SAP system. If we wanted to run a job to deactivate that SAP profile, we could allow the online SAP users to run those jobs directly in SAP while interception is switched off. Let's move on and talk briefly about the Save Jobs Pool and Log feature. Until now, we only had the option to get the SAP job pool or job log in the job output. But with version 9, it's possible to save the output in a different file from the job spool or job log, with the option to save it as a PDF or text file. 
For those not familiar with spawn jobs, these job types are child jobs executed by the parent job from controller. Up to version 9, we have this feature available for R3 jobs only, and with the new version, we are happy to report this has been improved and extended to process chain jobs, or what we commonly call BW jobs. In previous versions of the product, it wasn't necessary to use a smart folder in Control M to manage the spawn jobs and ensure the ending of the parent job once the child job is completed. This is not longer required with version 9, and we can fully control when we want the parent job to finish and keep or remove the dependency with the child jobs. In order to better follow all these child jobs, an enhancement has been made to add them in the monitoring domain. We'll be able to see the relationship between the parent job and all its children within the job parent properties in the general tab. This new feature applies only for R3 jobs, and we'll see it in the demo within a few minutes. In this version, we provide official support to SAP FCC, and through an SAP R3 job, you can automate your month-end financial closing process and expand the scope of your batch management. This requires the SAP FCC external job add-on to in the SAP system server. Here, we'll review some topics discussed previously during the presentation. Feel free to ask any question during the Q&A session. Now, let's move to our lab environment. Here you have the new job types that we discussed uh, Few minutes, few minutes back, and let me start talking about the activate or deactivate the an SAP profile. In this case, I am going to run a couple of jobs to activate and deactivate a automatically from a job a, a, an intertyping profile with name Shaul in the SAP system. Remember this uh, profile are safe in the SAP system, and previously, in version 8, we could active or deactive that SAP profiles manually from the CCM. Alternatively, you could uh, uh, enable this from the SAP system server. Now, we simplify the process, and let me run both of them. and we'll find in the job output how it looks like. Remember, this is a normal R3 job that uh, changed the action. Now, you should uh, choose activate or deactivate an SAP profile and choose what kind of profile you want to activate or deactivate. My job to activate the Shaul profile just ended. Let's check the job output. And we can see that uh, automatically, and from this new job type, it has been activated in the SAP system, in my SAP system. As soon as the second job uh, finished, like, uh, like uh, has finished right now, Let's check the job output. Thus, SAP profile is deactivated. Let me quickly remind you how it was done in version 8. From the CCM, going to the structure management, you need to choose the relevant SAP account that you have and let me remind you that you need to have this account defined with XBP3. As soon as this loads, I'll quickly load my SAP profiles existing in my SAP system. 
I can see all the different interceptive profiles and this field will tell you what profile is active or not. In previous job run, we uh, active and deactive, so this is why this is not active anymore. Let me go back to the Enterprise Manager client and let's talk now about events. And if you recall, uh, in version 8, um, we have the, the ability to manage the event, but it was a bit uh, tricky. Now, we found it from some customers. Now, we simplified this um, we simplify this process and now I can trigger an event from a job. If I run this job, remember with the with version eight we could also raise this event but only from the CTM R3 rec utility. Now this process is much easier, you don't need to know any parameter to run the utility, simply define a new job type and choose the action trigger and SAP event. Here you define the name of the event and the value of that parameter. And let me show you in my SAP system if I go to the transaction SM64, it will take me to the event history and as a result of the new job I just ran, I have my new SAP event with exactly the same name and status new. So what I want now is to watch my SAP system and detect that new event I just triggered. This new job type allow you to monitor in the SAP server and watch those events that you define here. Even further, you can uh, you have the ability to uh, define a time limit, and also you can send an alert to the EM to the enterprise manager in case that uh, after the completion of the this job this event is not found. So let me confirm and run this job and let's see the result. Going back to the SAP server, we'll find that this new job, what it's going to do is to identify this new event and confirm it and change the status to confirm. You see? it changed to confirm, meaning that the, it detected this event. And if we check the job output, we'll find that that event was found exactly with that ID, that event. Moving on, let's talk about uh, child jobs. And before... Um, before version 9, we have the ability to manage that spawn job, but if you recall, uh, we require the usage of uh, a smart folder to ensure the ending of the parent job once that all the child jobs ended. As you see over here, I'm using a normal folder, and open the job properties and if I click in SAP more let me talk about the, a couple of new features from one side uh, the management of the spawn jobs over here you can fully control the ending of your parent job and if, if you can select if, uh, if you want your parent job to wait for all the child jobs to complete and even define that the, this parent job will end based on my child job status. In this case, I am marking both options. And before running it, 
let me talk briefly about this other option that we have new in version 9. Uh, previously, um, we only have the possibility to get the jobs pool and the job log in the job output. Now with version 9, we have the ability to define in another file, in another file the spool or the job log or both. And you can even save it in PDF format. So as a result of my job completes, it will create in the C drive under SAP Plan Job Spool a file with my the spool of my job. So let's run it and let's check the results. <sighs> the job started and I know that in the background in my SAP system this job, this parent job is going to start four child jobs that eventually within a minute or a couple of minutes will start appearing in my enterprise manager. I got the first child job. We should get another three more. In the meantime, and let me talk about uh, the job trace, if you recall, we talked about this uh, in last uh, Connect with Control M for version 8. And um, now, for every single SAP job that we run, we have a unique job, for, job log for that job execution where you will have all the different APIs and the response back from the SAP system. So in case that you have uh, any problem, this is the best place to start. I have almost all my jobs running. I can see that the child job ended already. Let's wait um, for the ending of all of them. But uh, I'm seeing right now that my child one ended not okay, and if you recall, I define the properties of my parent job to end based on the job status. Uh, if I open the job output, I can clearly see that my child job one failed, and the parent job was failed as a result of the job definition. This is based on my child job status. Now, open the properties. Now that all my child jobs are uh, completed, uh, within the general tab of the parent job, um, it's quite easy to see right now the job hierarchy between the parent job and all the types. I can see that this parent job has four child jobs. The first one ended not okay. The other three ended okay. I can see over here the job count, the SAP job count. And even more, I can see that these child jobs create, as in the background, another child jobs for each one called SLP and the score one in child two, child three, and child four. Let me go to the C drive, and I can see, I discussed it before, that I have a new, a new log create for my users or anyone that they get access. If I open this file, we can see that I have the job spool safe in this file. Let's move on and talk about process change. Um, before version 9, that span jobs functionality only was available for R3 jobs. Now, 
with uh, version 9, we have it also available with uh, the VW jobs. So in this case, I have my process change. Let's click in the SAP More, and we can see that we have exactly the same options to manage the ending of my parent job, and if I want to uh, control and set the status of the parent job based on the child jobs. In this case, I'm not setting uh, any of these options, and you will find the difference within a minute. Let me release this job. And this process change is running this moment in my SAP system, and also this will create four child jobs in my SAP system. So within a minute, we'll get that child jobs in control M, and we'll find surely the difference comparing with my R3 span jobs that we ran a couple of minutes uh, before. In the meantime, and talking again about the job trace, um, within the job properties, I have the L, the order ID, which you will use to easily identify the relevant job trace of your job. If I open this job trace log, in this case, you can see the different APIs uh, being executed b between Control M and my SAP system, and we can see that this job uh, ended not okay as the job status in SAP was cancelled. So again, this is a really good place for troubleshooting. I strongly recommend. I am starting to see uh, my child jobs, uh, my four child jobs, and you may notice that my parent job is completed already. And this is as a result of the job definition. I broke the dependency between my parent job and my child jobs. Um, now, because I define it within the job, the ending of my parent job is independently of, of my child jobs. This concludes our demo. Let's go, let me go back to the presentation. As discussed in last session we had with version 8, we have a new log for every single job executed called job trace log. And this is the perfect place to start with in case of problems with any SAP job. This will show you all the different APIs executed and the response back received from SAP. Remember, it's a best practice to keep the product at the latest maintenance available to avoid, to avoid those bugs resolved. By the time we are running this session, we are very close to deliver our maintenance version 9001, so don't wait and start planning your upgrade. We are talking about upgrades, and if you are in that process or you think we'll be upgrading in a near future, we invite you to review the article 97180, which have many questions answered related to the installation and upgrade of this specific product. If you are one of those customers having control M for SAP version 7, please be aware we are dropping the support of this version by January 2018, and this affects all products with version 7, like control M agent, control M enterprise manager, etc. So to prevent any problems, we invite you to upgrade to any of the supported versions. Best if you choose version 9 to enjoy all the things this cassette in today's call. Thank you for taking time out of your day to attend. I hope the information provided was useful.